Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. So I'm back from my honeymoon and that was a really great vacation. I've got some footage that I'll probably put into another video with some of the snorkeling that I did and uh, some cool marine activities that I can show you from Vietnam where I was for the last few weeks. But today's video is a bit of a follow-up from the one I did a few weeks ago before I left on how to prepare your tank for vacation. Today it's what are we doing now that we're back from vacation to bring the tank back up to its top condition. Fortunately, while I was away, the tank uh, was looked after really well by my mum, who visited a couple of times to keep on top of things, and all of the automation that I have set up kept everything stable and tip-top. Unfortunately, one of my corals, uh, a fairly large uh, or medium-sized ACAN colony, somehow got knocked off the rock and landed upside down, and unfortunately about half of it has died because it was uh, in, embedded in the sand for I'm not sure how long, but obviously long enough to kill half of it. So what we're going to do today is take that coral out of the tank, cut away the dead skeleton, and as uh, I'm not a glass half full kind of guy, the opportunity of half a coral, or the opportunity that's been created by half of this coral dying is that there's now going to be space to add a new coral um, in its place. So I've already bought a coral, which you can probably just see there is currently being dipped and we're going to glue that into the skeleton of the existing coral where it's now dead. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today and I'm going to run you through how I do it. Now first up is to get that damaged A-can out of the tank so we can inspect it and cut away the dead skeleton. So as you can see, about half of the skeleton is now showing uh, and I don't want to leave the coral in that state because one, it's kind of ugly with a lot of exposed skeleton and two, with the way that acans grow, it will be an extremely long time before it grows back over that dead skeleton. It's much better to trim it away and let it grow more naturally with a new skeleton. Or in this case, I'm going to be trimming away the dead skeleton and grafting another acan onto the same piece so that it can go back in the tank and take up roughly the same amount of space. So we're just going to trim away the dead skeleton using these coral cutters. Now, a bandsaw would make this easier, but unfortunately I don't have one of those. But that's okay, because even little cutters like this, if you just take it slow, doing one little chip at a time, working your way in, you'll quite rapidly be able to get through a, a coral skeleton like I can. The key is not to get too close to the healthy skeleton. You don't want to rip any of that. So I'm going to be aiming to leave about five mil of dead skeleton perimeter around where the, uh, the good coral uh, or the, the live coral is still remaining. There we go. You just need to chop into the top like that and you can get big chips off. Ideally you want to score it a little bit so that it breaks along the line that you want it to break on take this opportunity to get rid of any vermited snails or other pests that you see while the coral's out of the water. Now this is where it gets tricky. Obviously cutting off that dead edge along there was quite easy, but here I have now an indented section that I want to cut out and I'm not sure how easily I'm going to be able to do that, but we'll give it a go and see how it goes. Hopefully I don't end up accidentally slicing the entire coral in half. So I'm just going to be careful. Ah, uh, there we go. See, that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. Oh well, we'll have to go with it now. This entire coral is now going to be cut in half. So while we're going to be cutting this in half, I'm going to have to cut this one head in half, which is where the skeleton broke. And it's best to do that with the trimmers so you get a clean cut. You don't want to be tearing, you want to be slicing. All right, 
right, so that didn't go exactly according to plan, but we'll make the best of it. It'll make it much easier to trim this dead section off this piece. And this piece is now almost 100% alive. There we go, perfect. Okay, so I've just prepared a small amount of water with this iodine-based reef dip. Uh, this is great for when you frag the coral, especially in the way that I've just fragged it, where there was uh, potentially some uh, flesh that's been cut and some heads that were dying as a result of the accident that happened in the tank. So you want an iodine-based dip to prevent bacterial infections and, and just strengthen the coral a little bit. So I'm gonna put these two frags in the iodine-based dip for a few minutes while we work. So I'll leave these corals in this iodine-based dip for probably five to 10 minutes. Now here we have the new coral that I've bought. This is an ACAN, which is actually two different types of ACAN grafted uh, together, which will be pretty cool. You probably can't see it very well in this light. Now obviously this coral is currently on a frag plug, which I won't be needing. So I'm gonna chip it off the frag plug now. And it's as easy as that. I just bought this ACAN from Jack and Billy at Reef Galleria Aquarium and Cafe in South Melbourne. Uh, they've got a stack of really good ACANs at the moment, and this is the one that I liked. It's got a red side and a green side. Now what I'm intending on doing is gluing now the two halves of my existing, of what's left of my existing ACAN onto either side of this. So it's going to be this cool hybrid ACAN, and then gluing it back in the tank in the place where it originally came from. And this time I'll be taking care to glue it more effectively than I did last time so that hopefully it never gets knocked off again. Now while we wait for that iodine dip to do its thing on that ACAN that we just cut up, I'm going to be preparing the putty that I'm going to be using to combine all of these ACANs into a single colony. Uh, in my case, I'm going to be using the Aquaforest Afix glue. Uh, this is a two-part putty. You combine it together by folding it and folding it and folding it until the two putties are completely mixed. And then you've probably got about 15 minutes to work with it uh, until it starts to get very hard. Uh, it's perfectly safe for the marine tank. I've used almost this entire packet now. I'll be using the last of it for this little job right now, but I really re recommend it. A little tip you can use is it's not particularly sticky, but once it uh, solidifies, it's hard as rock. So you can use it in combination with super glue to get a really solid.
Now in much the same way, I'll apply super glue to the bottom of the frag, then I'll attach a piece of putty, then I'll apply super glue to the putty and then press the whole piece into my rockwork. 